Okay, the one time, boy. Let's get the boat. Get a rifle. Go get us as a big gator for lunch. Uh, we're on lockdown. Oh, crap. I guess we gotta make them lie. First of all, hat tip to cooks.com who provided the recipe. There will be a link in the description below as well as a link to ingredients. Some of the highlights are chicken breast, pre-cooked Cajun sausage, frozen uh, pepper and onion medley, pasta, and a plethora of other ingredients. So let's get started. Okay, so the first step is that we're gonna add the chicken that we diced up. We have a little bit of olive oil in the pan, so we're just gonna pop those in there. Now, one of the things to realize is the world is run by lawyers. So when you look at these ingredients, one of the things it's gonna say is make sure that you cook the chicken all the way through thoroughly. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you do that, everything's going to be hard as rubber. So what we're looking to do is we're gonna leave that on here until it browns and just on the outside. And the reason why you'll see later, it's actually gonna cook uh, in the juices for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So it's gonna be plenty of time to get done all the way through. So we'll let that go and we'll come back for our next step. All right, so that looks pretty good. So we're gonna add in the frozen peppers right now. If you're using fresh peppers, I would wait a little bit, but again, I'm all about the easy. So we're just gonna throw the peppers in there, get them all inside. Probably should use something other than your hand, but hey, I never said I wasn't a caveman. And then we're gonna add in the sausage as well, and we'll get that all mixed up. And we're just gonna stir that up. We're gonna let the sausage cook and the peppers cook. And then we will come back to that in just a moment. So we'll let that go and we'll see you in a minute or so. So that looks pretty good. So we're ready for our next step. Now, if you have fresh garlic, that's better. We're just gonna leave a little spot in the middle here. And I'm just using chunky garlic paste because it's easy, cheap, and simple. And again, kind of fits in with the theme. I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. And I'm just gonna let that simmer for about 30 seconds. And then we're gonna mix it up and we're on to the next step. So the next step, we've got the garlic mixed in. We're gonna take some of the uh, Tony's Creole seasoning and we're gonna pop it in there. And people always wonder, what is the difference between Cajun and Creole? And Cajun is more of like, I guess you'd call it swamp hillbilly cooking. It's simpler, a little more, uh, you know, down to earth, whereas Creole is more of a culinary art form and it's mostly a city thing. So if you're ever wondering that, now you know. So we're gonna add in our pasta and you can use any pasta you want. This is just baked ziti or Italian ziti, I'm sorry, not baked ziti. And we're just gonna mix this in so that our ingredients are just together. And you can see this is uncooked um, dehydrated pasta. It's not fresh, nothing fancy, easy to store. We're just going to mix that up. And then we're going to take our diced tomatoes and we're going to dump it on top and get all that goodness out of there. And finally, we're going to pour our chicken broth in there and the pasta is going to cook in the chicken broth and it's gonna taste really, really good. So we'll get all this and we'll drown it. And the secret is we're gonna bring this back up to a simmer. Obviously the colder ingredients are gonna bring our temperature down now. So I'm gonna increase the heat a little bit till I get it to simmer once I mix it in. And then I wanna keep it on as low a temperature as I can where it's still simmering. Again, if you cook this at too high of a heat, you don't want to have rubber chicken. That's not our goal. So just get it so it's simmering. And I'm going to raise the heat right now and we'll come back to this in just a moment. And you will see the next step. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We're going to continue to rotate uh, through the pasta, which I'll do in a moment. Again, we want to make sure every noodle gets its chance to be on the bottom 
to absorb the juice, to cook all the way through. And the pasta is really gonna be your main uh, key to when this is done. So once you get the noodles to the desired uh, consistency, that means you're ready to go for the next step. Now, a couple things to say about spices. I did salt and pepper this earlier. However, uh, it didn't make it on camera because I actually forgot about it. So when you're adding spice to it, especially this Cajun spice, you saw what I did originally. I pretty much spread it all over the top of the ingredients. That seems to be a good rule of thumb for me, for my family, for my pan. However, make sure that you don't put too much because you can always add, but you can't subtract. So we don't want to make it too spicy. And people can always add more on their individual plate if they want to. So again, this is looking pretty good. We're just going to rotate it through and just fold everything over gently. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as everybody gets their chance to be on the bottom. That's what we want. And you can see how the chicken broth is starting to absorb uh, into the pasta, which is again, what we want. So we've been at this. I originally set this, once I brought it back up to a uh, simmer, I set the timer for 20 minutes. Seems to be doing pretty good. We've got about seven or eight minutes left and we will check back with you when we're ready for the next step. All right, so that's been 20 minutes and as we can see, if we scrape the bottom, there's very little juice left. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and then we're going to get some sharp cheddar cheese. And we're not going to use the whole bag because we're not making mac and cheese. We're just making jambalaya and putting some cheese on it. So it is not a rocket science. So what I try to do is just cover the surface lightly with it. And again, you can do this to your taste, but I wouldn't do too much cheese. Otherwise it gets too cheesy. All right. So that looks good. And then we're going to get the heavy cream. Now, a word about cream. If you do not want to use heavy whipping cream, do not use whipping cream. This is just heavy cream. And I use this for cooking a whole bunch of different things. It is hard to find sometimes. In this recipe, if you can't find it in your store, then what I recommend you do is go ahead and use just regular cream. Just don't use as much. So we'll get that in there. And we're just going to pour. Wow, it's frozen heavy cream, evidently. I guess my refrigerator is working really well today in Phoenix. And there we go. Just had to break the cap. It is real, real cream from a fresh dairy. So that's probably why. So once we get that in, then we're just going to fold this together and let the heavy cream and the cheese melt and we'll make that into a nice mixture you can see that it's taking the juices and the cream left it's making a nice sauce for us so that's going to really really keep everything moist and nice so we'll get that set up and you can do a taste test once you get this done if you want, uh, just to see if you need more spice. But I would caution that, you know, make sure you mix it thoroughly because you don't want pockets of hot uh, Cajun spice. Uh, that could definitely ruin the meal too, uh, if you make it too hot for you and your family. And then to add some color, we're just gonna take some parsley and we're just gonna distribute it through there and give ourselves some interest and we are ready to go so let's get that on a plate so there you have it cajun jambalaya one pot meal something different sausage pasta chicken it's got it all let's give it a shot here mm -mm 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 -mm. see you in the next one be sure to like share and subscribe Thanks for watching.